Welcome to my RTS camera tutorial. This video should assist my blog post to show you all the steps I did. And for more detailed explanations, please check out my blog post in the description. So first of all, I want to show you the end result, what we are going to program. So I'm pressing play here. Um, the camera will be able to move by WASD and on the edges. So moving my mouse to the edges moves the camera or to the corners. Then the camera will be able to be rotatable with Q and E. And it's rotatable by holding down the right mouse button and moving around. And with the mouse wheel you can zoom out and zoom in. And last but not least, I also made a function so you can press T to go to first person perspective and look around and press T again to go into RTS mode. So that's all of it. To start with, we will create a new project. So if you open Unreal Engine 5, select Games and I use the top down example. I will name it my RTS game and you can check the starter content if you want to continue working on this project for some stuff. I don't need it so I leave it like that. So I press create. So when Unreal loaded the project um, what we will do at the beginning is delete this top-down character here. We do not need it because we will do our own controls. So select it and press delete on your keyboard. Um, to start with we will open the content drawer and create a new folder here. So all our stuff is in the RTS folder. And I'm creating a blueprint class. We need a pawn. This will be our RTS camera. We need another one, a player controller. This is our RTS controller. So to start with, we have to you uh, tell Unreal Engine that the game should use our blueprints to work with. So go to the top right corner settings, open the project settings and when you go to the section maps and modes you can open the selected game mode and in the default game mode we set the player controller class to our class you can search it rts controller and the default pawn class we set it to rts camera so it will automatically save you can leave the project settings open and switch back to the map now we set unreal engine to use our stuff and now we can start to fill our stuff. So we open the RTS camera first. You can drag the tab up there to make it full screen. And this is uh, what the element or the RTS camera looks like in the game. So it only has a default scene route that is invisible. And we will add a spring arm. And to the spring arm, we will add a camera. So, this basic setup is just that the spring arm is the distance and the angle for the camera, and the camera gives us the view. Um, if you press play now, you already should spawn your RTS camera and you can see the flat angle. So to make it a better RTS camera I select the spring arm and in the top here I select the rotate 
you can also press E to select it. And then I'm dragging the green arc and rotate the camera up. So press compile, save. When I play now, oh yeah, there was one missing thing. Select the spring arm and uncheck the do collision test. So when I play, press play again now, it's zoomed in. So we need to adjust the target arm length of the spring arm as well. And here we go. So now you have a better view from the top. Uh, you can play around with the settings if you like, but I will jump to the next. So now we can program our first control. So all our blueprint code or our main blueprint code will be in the RTS controller. So I open it up with double click. Um, it may look a bit different and you may have to press open full blueprint. Uh, otherwise select the event graph tab in the top. Um, we will start with the WASD control. So we already have events for move forward configured in the top down example and move right. And we need our get controlled pawn. This is basically our RTS camera and we need the function set actor location. Drag out here. So we connect this and we need the current location, so get actor location. And to the actor location, we add something. So there is uh, operators add. And here we can say make vector. So to the current location of our RTS camera, we want to add a new vector. And the vector consists of axis value multiply with any number. I zoom in a bit and I connect it to the x-axis. Uh, when I compile this and play and I press W and S, the camera moves. It's a bit too fast so I make this like this. Uh, it's inverted so for now I just multiply it with minus 1. I also could write minus 25 but I will make this to a variable later. So when I press play now, I press W, it's going forward, I press S, it's going backwards. A and D does nothing, but we can just take all of this. Control C, Control V, and I will connect this one. The axis value goes here, and the difference is the axis, like I press L, Alt, left click, and then I connect it to Y. So when I compile, save, and play, I can move with WASD. So um, one minor issue is that we have duplicated code here. So I can select everything that is duplicated and then I say collapse to right click collapse to function and I name it oops and I name the function move camera 
So the move camera just gets a vector. You can double click to open the function. So if you change something here, you change it on every move camera call. And I can reuse the function. I control C, control Y, and I select, I drag the right pins into it, delete this, make it a bit more beautiful. And when I play now, it's still working and our code is cleaned up. Next we will do the movement with the mouse. So for that I will use the event tick. It's already here, but otherwise you can just write it and say event tick. And we will need some nodes. We will no need to know the current mouse position, so we will use get mouse position on viewport and we need get viewport widget geometry and from the widget geometry the return value we need the local get local size and we can break this vectors, break vector 2D, break vector 2D. So we have our mouse position, we know the screen size and I want to show you uh, the coordinates on the screen so I will use the print string function and I will use the X here and then I will use append make two blanks here add a pin and add the Y axis so when you press play now uh, yeah, to, to see the mouse cursor we go to RTS controller and say show mouse cursor here. So when I move the mouse around I can see oh I have to put this here. So you can see now the coordinates of my mouse cursor. When I move my mouse the coordinates change. When I move to the top left corner you can see zero zero is around here. It's hard to, to get to zero zero and around here it's like my the 2000 pixels and down here it's like 1100 pixels so that's basically what i want to show you we don't need this anymore you can delete it and now we can use a branch node because we want to check if the x coordinate is smaller than 50 I use magic number you can change it like you wish and if that is the case we have to move the camera to the left so I use the move camera and the vector and I move the camera by yeah, 20, 25 on the y-axis when I'm X smaller 15 move camera oh that's zero okay I have to 
just use 25. So when I move to the left side, I will move the camera to the left. Now we can do the same for the right side. So we have to do a little math. We subtract from the screen size. We say minus and do minus 50. And this has to be like the mouse has to be greater than this value and as we cannot be on both sides of the screen we can use here the false connection and when it's false we just move the camera again but now we will move it in minus 25 As you can see, we are using the same values often, so left and right works, top and down is missing. So I want to show you how to get rid of all these magic numbers. If you drag out any number, you can say promote to variable. And I will name this one here um, camera scroll speed like this is the speed the camera is moving and I can select uh, drag this variable onto the other 25 and this variable I will promote the variable and name camera edge scroll threshold and I also can drag it onto here you could also just use the same node and connect it like this. So I compile, save and see if I have broken something. Everything is fine. And don't forget to use the variables here as well. Camera scroll speed, camera scroll speed. And now you can see why I used another minus one multiplication. So I can use the same variable, the positive variable everywhere. And when I change the camera scroll speed, for example, here, I double it, you can see that the camera is moving faster now. I change it back because it's a bit too fast. Okay, and now we can do the same for the up and down movement. I make a bit place here to program. And we will insert a sequence here. As we have probably we have dead ends here, we want we don't want to program after the branches. So I'm using a sequence and I'm opening another branch down here. And we basically do the same for the y-axis. So y smaller than our variable, camera edge scrolls threshold. And if that's the case, we can move our camera. Copy this and we have to use the x axis. So when we move up, we have to multiply with my minus one here. When I move up, the camera moves up and now we need this minus again, like minus our camera threshold. And y has to be greater than this value. And if so, we can use a branch. And here we connect the force to move the camera again. to x and this should be all
Now I can go to the edges and move the camera. The corner works as well. And WASD still works. So to make the things a bit more clear, we can select all of this and press C on the keyboard to make a command. And this is uh, move RTS camera with mouse. I will change the color a bit and select the hex code, control C. And this here is uh, move RTS camera with WASD. Control double uh, V and I make another command section here. This is move left right and this is move up down. The next topic, topic I want to show you is frame independence. So we will go to the lever and if you enter stat FPS into the console down here, uh, you will have the current FPS shown on the right, uh, right side of the lever, more on the top. And we will lower our FPS now. I write T max FPS. I press tab and set it to 30. So you can see that our FPS is now kept at 30 FPS. And when I press play again, you can see that the camera moves way slower than it did before. This is because we kept the FPS to 30 and this is basically simulating a slower computer now for us for our showing purpose if the FPS is 80 again you can see when I move around the camera moves much faster so Faster computers move the camera faster, slower computers move the camera slower, and we do not want to have this. So we go to our RTS controller. Oh yeah, I want to show you how you can cap the, RT, uh, the FPS when you go to project settings. You can go to um, general, general settings. There is a use fixed frame rate, 30. I do this most of the time so that my GPU is not working that much while I'm programming. And now you can see the FPS is kept at 30. I say start FPS again to remove this. So to make our con controls frame independent, we will use the delta seconds here. So this value gives us the duration the last frame took. So basically we just have to multiply our camera scroll speed with delta seconds and now we have the camera scroll speed set per speed per second. So camera scroll speed is now speed per second. If you have more questions, please head to my blog post. I explained a bit more there. And now we can just use our new value for our camera scroll speed values. So I connect this to here, delete this node, and connect it to everywhere else. Um, here, we have to still multiply it with minus one here. And here, delete that, and to here, delete that. So when I move now, 
with the mouse the camera is extremely slow because this value is per second now so I have to increase it to some value you can play around with certain values what feels good that's too slow yeah that looks okay uh, and don't forget the WASD movement so if you play now you move like yeah thousand units per frame <laughs> so here we can use world delta seconds and multiply our camera scroll speed with that value delete this so when you're done the WASD movement also uses the new value it could be a bit faster so when I select the camera scroll speed again I increase the speed and now it feels good so the next thing we will do is the camera zoom uh, first we will control a new keyboard uh, key binding go to input and the project settings and here you can add a new action mapping so we will need zoom in and we will need zoom out and we want to use the mouse wheel up for zooming in and the mouse wheel down for zooming out so you can go back to the RTS controller and right click anywhere to get our new events zoom in and zoom out so to zoom in and to zoom out we need our spring arm so we go to the top here is the event begin play node and we have to get controlled pawn and we have to cast it to our RTS camera and from our RTS camera I want to have the spring arm I have to scroll to the bottom here get spring arm and I say promote to variable and connect the setting the variable so we have a variable spring arm now that we can use as our spring arm so I can drag it here and say get spring arm what we need is the target arm length so get target arm length and we also need set target arm length and we have to add to the target arm length some value like 100 and we can also promote this to a variable and say this is camera zoom speed and if we test this yeah it has to be multiplied with minus one and we basically can copy this and we just have to remove this minus one here
So now I can scroll out and uh, something is wrong. So out, zoom in. Ah, this is wrong here. Remove pin, I have to multiply, not add one. Multiply. Minus one. And now it should work. Yeah, I can zoom out and can zoom in. So I can use a function here as well. So I select the duplicate code, collapse the function, and name it zoom camera I copy zoom camera and connect the camera speed here and delete the rest I check if it is still working and it works and I'm adding a command zoom RTS camera and I'm setting the color to this color code here we go so now we will do the camera rotation so we need a new mapping again head to the project settings input and this time axis mapping say add and we name this rotate camera and here we will add another um, line you can click here and say Q and click here and say E and the scale has to be minus one on E. So we can jump back to our RTS controller, say right click, rotate camera event, and we will use um, the get control pawn. And from this we will use add actor world rot rotation. And we can drag out this and say make rotator. For our QE rotation we need the yaw. So we can set the yaw to some value, axis value, multiply. Then we can make our value like the rotation speed. I will do any guess and say promote to variable. Name it camera rotation speed. And connect it to the yaw. When I test this, I press QE, it's pretty fast. Uh, yeah, we need our delta seconds. Get our delta seconds and add a pin here. So we have a rotation per second now. That's a bit slow, so I will select camera rotation speed yeah that's better and I am done with rotating we will do a command here rotate RTS camera get this color and that was the rotation with Q&E
So next we will do the rotation with the mouse. Um, no, first of all, we are not done, sorry. I will show you a problem now. When we rotate the camera and now we are using W, S or A or D, we are still moving in direction of the lever and not our camera. It's the same when I move my mouse to the edges. So we have to up update our movement code. Now our move camera function comes in handy. Double click on move camera to jump into the function. And the only thing we have to do is to rotate our um, input vector. We say get actor rotation and this vector we say rotate vector by the rotation of our controlled pawn and we have to put it down here. So when I... oh yeah First of all, the, cam the movement is flipped now. You can fix it when you go to the RTS camera. Select the spring arm and world rotation and rotate it on the blue angle by 180 degrees. It is explained in detail in my blog post, so check it out please. And if we pre press play again, it's correct. Now when we rotate, we move in the correct direction. Like we can rotate the camera in any angle and it always will move like intended. Now we will do the rotation with the mouse. So we will reuse this here and we can say collapsed function. This is rotate camera um, left right. So we will add new axis mappings again. So we will add an axis mapping for rotate camera left right and one for rotate camera up down. We will select the mouse X here and mouse Y here. And now we can use this rotate camera left right. We have to check if our right mouse button is down, so we use is input key down and we select the right mouse button. And if it's down, we just say rotate camera left right, our function, and put in the axis value. So when I hold down right mouse button, I can rotate to the left and right. And Q and E is working. Still working. So we do the same for rotate camera up down and for that we will duplicate our function so rotate camera left right I right click and say duplicate and name it rotate camera up down so we have to exchange our get controlled pawn with our spring arm we don't need this anymore and we need another function we need the function 
um, how is it called at at local rotation we connect all the missing parts yeah we do, do not use the function yet so head to the event graph and now you can drag our new function in here connect everything and we need the branch as well so I copy this and when right mouse button is down I can rotate camera up and down so when I hold right click now it's wrong <laughs> Mm, yeah, I know what was the mistake. We have to switch here to the pitch. So now, yeah, now it's working. Um, one issue we have now is that we can rotate our camera without any cap. And yeah, if you like this in your game, you can leave it but for most of the games you have to cap it so we will stay here in this function and do a little map um, we need our rotation so get Where is it? Get relative rotation. And we can break this. Break rotator. So this is the current rotation. We need the pitch. So this is the current rotation. Um, we say this plus we add the rotation that should be added. And then we clamp it. And here you can say minus 75, minus 15. And the return value has to subtract the current rotation again. And this is our new pitch. And now you can see that our camera is not able to move exceeding the cap we set. So our minimum angle is minus 15 and the maximum angle is minus 75. It's explained a bit more in my blog post so if you need a background how this works please check it out. And this was our camera rotation. We can make this command bigger. make it a bit more beautiful and now we can get to the next step last but not least we will do switching between FPS camera and RTS camera so we go to our level open the content drawer and in our RTS folder we create another blueprint and we need a character and call it FPS camera. I open it and we select the capsule component and add camera to it. And we move it up a bit so it's on the head. And that's all for our FPS camera. We can go back to our controller and we have to spawn the FPS camera. So on begin play we say spawn actor from class and we will select the class FPS camera. 
and the return value we say promote to variable because we will need it. Mm, we call it FPS camera and I add it to the components. And we also need this RTS camera promote to variable. And we can use this node. So I have the RTS camera object now and I have the FPS camera object now in variables. So now I can use them. Uh, we make a comment here as well and say this is initialization. Oh yeah, we need transform of the RTS camera. Say get transform and set the transform to the spawn. This is basically where it should spawn. Okay. So now we can use the FPS camera and the RTS camera object um, to switch. We have uh, we need a new mapping, so go to project settings input. We add an action mapping and we call it switch camera mode and we set it on T. And what we need as well is a variable that says when we are or in which mode we are. So go to variables on the left side and select plus. And if it, if it's not, select a boolean here and name it B camera um, RTS mode. So when this is true, we are in the RTS mode. If it's false, we are in the FPS mode. Um, compile and select a variable and say camera RTS mode ticket as default is true. So we start in the RTS camera mode. Uh, now we can program the switching. So get the switch camera mode event and when we press T we need to check where we are so uh, in which mode we are so true means we are in the rts mode and false means we are in the fps mode and every time we switch so i put the sequence here again uh, every time we switch we have to toggle our variable so do a sequence here so after we switched i will toggle the boolean so get then not boolean gives the opposite value and then we need a set so I set the value of camera RTS mode to not camera RTS mode every time I switch the camera and to switch the camera camera we just say possess so here we need the FPS camera and say possess. This basically means the player takes control over this pawn and we say RTS camera possess on false. So if I say play and I press T I switch to the other mode. The controls are still working a bit, it's a bit weird, but we will fix this soon now. Um, one thing I want to show you is that if I press T here, I still spawn up here where the initial spawn point was. So if you don't want to have this, uh, you have to set the location of the camera to the location of the other mode. 
So I say get actor location here and I say get actor location here and then we just need a set actor location and set it to the opposite location uh, like the set it to the location of the other mode and here I need a set actor location as well and connect everything and connect it to the location of the other mode so that's basically it so when I switch the mode at the corner here now I'm in the corner in the other mode so I make a comment around this this is switching between FPS and RTS mode good now we can make the controls first of all I will guard all controls of the camera with a branch so everywhere where the RTS camera is moved we will branch it and only if B camera RTS mode is true only then we will move the camera and we need a branch here as well Yeah, you can make it more beautiful if you want to, but for me it's, it's enough. I have to branch this here as well. To branch here. Not here. So here we still need a branch here as well. So now I compile save play and I'm testing if everything is still working in the RTS mode and when I switch to the FPS mode I cannot move anymore and that's what we want so now we can program our FPS controls so for that we will go into our project settings again input and we will create an um, axis mapping turn in FPS mode and look up in FPS mode. Here we say mouse X and here mouse Y and here we set it to minus one so we can use this new nodes in our RTS controller look uh, up FPS no that's the wrong turn, turn FPS and look up FPS so when we are in the FPS mode, we have to branch as well and select the false. I copy this. And when 
false, we can say at your input. Uh, yeah, false. And here on false, we say at pitch input. If you test this and go to FPS mode, you can turn around, but only by holding down right click. And up and down is not working yet. I will go to this soon. First, we will go to our switching here. And when we go into FPS mode, we want to um, set show mouse cursor to false and if we switch to RTS mode we want to show our mouse cursor back again. So if I play now and switch the mode I can turn without holding down right click and the mouse cursor is gone. And to fix our up and down rotation we have to go to the, our uh, FPS camera. Um, and select um, the camera and say use pawn control rotation. You can drag this to make it bigger. Use pawn control rotation set to true. So if we play now and switch to FPS camera, we can look up and down, right, left and right. So this works. Now we can move the WASD movement. Uh, first of all, I will do a comment here and say um, look around in FPS mode. I give it another color. And now we will use the WASD movement. We can reuse this here and say on false, we can use the at movement input node, but not that way. So I say get controlled pawn at movement input on false. The scale value is the axis value, and for the world direction, I just get the forward vector put it in here. So if I press play and switch to the FPS mode I can move forward already. So to make it a bit more readable double click here, double click here and then I will do the same for left and right so I copy this I select get right vector and connect this to force and the axis value here again And now we should be finished with our movement. So I can use W, S, A, and D, and it works. Um, last but not least, let me comment this. This is move with USD in FPS mode. I set the color to this color. So if you want to, you can um, make a jump as well. So go to project settings and add uh, action mapping. Name it jump. I will do it on space. And in the RTS controller, select jump. And on 
branch. Copy this. You can say jump on get controlled pawn jump no that's wrong you need to you need the fps camera Let's say jump here this only works on characters and that's why i need the fps camera and stop jumping here. This is only when you hold the space bar longer, you jump higher. You can look it up elsewhere if you need such a mechanic, but for our purpose, this is fine. So when I switch to FPS mode, I can move, look around and jump as well. No, I cannot. This is wrong. I have to use the false pin, obviously. So when I press play now, press T, I can jump around, move around. And when I press T again, I switch to RTS mode and can switch back with pressing T to the FPS mode. So that's basically it. And have a nice day. It's always the right time. Stay creative. Goodbye.